a five-year-old St. Lucian boy shows his independence at an early age. From age five, this guy has been so independent. I distinctly recall I had a small boat and I went to the north of St. Lucia and we were swimming. He said, I want to swim too. And he took an ordinary rubber tube and jumped in the water. And that, Alan is fearless. A promising young professional impresses his seniors with his intellect and acumen. And Chris Blackwell called him in and said, look, I need a person of your temperament to work with me. And he went to South Beach. And he developed some major skills here, how South Beach was developed. And Chris Blackwell was so impressed with him. Aki um, got him assigned to the Miami Tourist Board. When British Airways finally took over Bowie, St. Lucia was out because nobody negotiated with them. And he only had one week to deal with when he got in. And the same day he was assigned as uh, Minister of Tourism, he flew to London and met the chairman of British Airways and explained the predicament. And the guy gave him half a flight a week. But again, because of his personality and whatever it is, he was able to convince the chairman of British Airways, who he remains very close to today, that St. Lucia was a good destination. Up to today, it is now nine years. We have 14 flights a week. Alan Chastney, a tried and proven son of the soil, offers his experience and commitment to the people of St. Lucia. Alan is a very, very passionate person about things that he believes in, things that he's committed to. He doesn't do anything halfway. You know, it's either a thousand percent or nothing at all. He is very clear as to what he wants for St. Lucia and the people of St. Lucia. I've said I want to make St. Lucia the best place to live, the best place to work, the best place to invest, and the best place to visit. It's a vision endorsed by his United Workers Party, a party that has regrouped and rallied around his leadership. United Workers Party um, was and has been the most successful political party in St. Lucia in terms of development achievements in this country. So all the major infrastructural projects that you see, um, tourism, agriculture, education, water, electricity, all came from, from this party. Um, the party fell on bad times because the hierarchy of the party left all at the same time and there was no succession planning within the party. We've now rectified that situation. We've vision, mission and values um, that we clearly articulate what is it that we'd like to see change. So a globally competitive education system. So it's not about just being able to teach kids to read and write, it's to make them competitive with the world. And also to recognize that the world now recognizes that creative thinking is the greatest measurement of a successful education system. So we want to do that. We want to have um, sports that we can invest in. So a sport that we can invest in is a sport that men and women can play, that is team, that creates fitness, that develops values in terms of competitiveness and discipline, um, uh, creates an opportunity for community integration, so through competitions, then offers the, the children an opportunity to go to university. Because only one third of our young people get to go to tertiary level education because they can't afford it and the state can't afford it. So by identifying disciplines that have opportunities to get scholarships would be, would be fantastic. I mean, change is always a difficult thing. I mean, it's always a hard pill to swallow. With change, there's always upheaval, there's always uproar and so on. But I'm happy, I'm satisfied that on the heels of all of this, we are now a united party and we are stronger for it. Because now that we have all come together, we have resolved our differences, we have you know, put things together, I think the UWP now is ready, stronger than ever, to be able to take on the mantle to govern this country and to provide to St. Lucians what they expect of a good government and you know, to relieve them of the stresses and strains that they're going through under the St. Lucia Labour Party. Alan Chastney is an aggressive individual, he is a visionary individual, and I think he understands what teamwork means. The St. Lucia Labour Party is Kenny Anthony. So Kenny Anthony has failed, so St. Lucia has failed. But Alan understands that he has to draw on the strengths of the people around him. And it is teamwork that will take St. Lucia out of the, the doldrums and bring us to the level that we want to be. 
given his experience in tourism, in, in you know, the business and so on, and the experience of the various candidates we, we, that we have and the competencies that they bring to the table, I have no doubt in my mind that Team UWP will, you know, make it happen for St. Lucia. Alan Chastney is an excellent leader. I grew up with Alan Chastney playing basketball in the, one of the areas in the city. Um, I know him very well and I would not have been on that team had it not been for his will and passion for winning. And um, we need a team that can win against Kenny Anthony. And I think Alan understands what it takes to put a winning combination together. And I have great respect for that. And that's why I'm with him. Entrepreneurship will be one of the key components in building the new St. Lucia. We also believe in entrepreneurship. So it's teaching young people how to be able to start small businesses, but it means we've got to fix the economy that if they do something, that they can, it, it, it has an opportunity of succeeding. Every major business has one thing in common. It started small. So it's, it's to create that incubator that encourages these businesses and those ideas to come out and to give young people the confidence um, that, that, that their idea can succeed. But it means our education system must change, right? Why aren't we using tablets instead of books? We don't need to build libraries anymore because you have the best library accessible. So what, to facilitate that, the number one thing is you must make internet available island-wide and it has to be incredibly affordable. It's no longer a choice. The world demands it. Why are you limiting the, 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 the competitiveness of your, of your nation by providing that simple thing? Unemployment is at an all-time high in St. Lucia and will require immediate attention should the UWP be successful at the polls. The good thing is, is that in, as a percentage, it's a big number. 26% unemployment, 47% unemployment among youth. In absolute terms, it's not that huge. So a couple of major investments in this country and you can turn things around. That's, that's the great news. The question is why has not anybody ever been able to do it before? How do you make that transition? So I'm not as daunted by um, getting people jobs. I'm more daunted by the medium term and long term being able to create jobs that can translate into careers. Mm -hmm. Jobs that one, people enjoy doing and that's always the trick, the balance. Because people may feel, boy, these are the only kind of jobs that are available and I'm really not going to enjoy it. Um, so it's, you could never be so focused on one industry because otherwise it's difficult to get everybody to like tourism or to get everybody to like agriculture or to get everybody to like manufacturing. Um, so you've got to be able to have enough industries that can meet the needs of the people and then make them competitive enough competitive enough that they can afford to pay great salaries and I, I feel that when you have the level of poverty that we have you have people who are suffering to the extent that we that they are um, that there has to be more urgency in what we're doing like most Caribbean islands tourism is a mainstay of St. Lucia's economy Alan Chastney is passionate about the enhancement of what is authentically St. Lucian this is the typical story of a lot of Caribbean islands that we, we don't appreciate the value of, of a waterfront. So here we are in Castries Harbor. The cruise ships come right here and pass and they go right over here to Point Seraphine and dock. And you have to look at it from the perspective of the cruise ship. So it, most people will be on the ninth floor. So they're looking down at this. And so the idea is how do you make this attractive without allowing it to lose its authenticity? that a man up there says, you know, baby, you go shopping. I'm going to take the little fishing boat and I'm going to come right here, sit underneath a coconut tree, have a nice beer, have some nice food. And I was speaking to the fishermen, right? The fact that the tourists can come here and actually participate in cleaning fish, fish, right? Maybe there's even a little tour out here that they go and pull some fish pots. But we don't have to change anything. All we have to do now is enhance what this is in order that they can generate more revenue. And as I said, so once the people come here, now all of a sudden they can walk across the street. And what do we do? It's the same shacks, just fix up the, the electricity in them, fix up the plumbing in them, put some nice washrooms. The, the, this looks rustic on the outside, okay? Now imagine if I come here, what's my expectation? Nothing. I come and I sit here 
and all of a sudden the guy says, oh, if you want some Wi-Fi, boss, just hook up to Joe's, right? And just put in whatever, right? Domino as my code, right? And I'm got on Wi-Fi and you go, damn, I'm sitting here, I'm hooking up in this beautiful view, right? Then I say, okay, let me get something to eat, right? And he tells me he can do fish three different ways. I can do my whole fish, I can do filet, I have my different little sauces I'm going to do, right? And a girl comes out and, and gives me some stuff and maybe she speaks a different language. Maybe she speaks Spanish, maybe she speaks French. All those things, because the expectation was so low, it goes through the roof. One of the little huts now can sell art. Another one could be selling crafts. But all of a sudden now, it goes from a mercy purchase to, wow, a t-shirt that has what? His little bar here. And you're going to treasure that forever because you had an experience at the place. Alan Chastney dreams of a St. Lucia that is competitive on the world stage. But he also understands that traditional thinking will not be enough to achieve that goal. Do we believe that where we need to take St. Lucia and how we have to compete in the world that just providing the minimum level of education is enough. Now, is it reasonable that I can say that we can turn around and spend twice as much money in education as we are now? And the answer to that question is no. Unless you substantially increase the size of your budget, you can't do it. So the question becomes, you've got to think out of the box and think of alternative ways of making that $4,000 translate into a more effective way of spending money. So getting rid of school books and now going on to a curriculum that's on uh, your, your tablet yeah. and allowing teachers to spend more time teaching rather than being administrators. And, but that requires a quantum leap. That requires a change in thinking. And it's something that we have to get society in. Now the advantage that we have is we're a small country. This is not a country of 330 million people that it may take forever to make that happen. We can make these changes very quickly and we're going to have to make those changes very quickly and that's why we continue to say we must build a new San Lucia. The San Lucia that we have today is not working for us. The democracy is not working. The, the basic human rights that we need is not working for us. The children of St. Lucia are dear to the heart of Alan Chastney. He wants the best for them and in turn wants them to achieve their best. Sports and the arts will be two of the catalysts in this effort. Today, sports has become so incredibly competitive, right? Many governments focus on the glorious things, the stadiums, and, mm -hmm. but how do you get there? How do you become a champion? Become a champion by having dedicated coaching at a primary school level, dedicated coaching at a secondary school level, mm -hmm. and then now being able to put together tournaments that start bringing out that competitive advantage in, 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 in kids, okay? So it's at those years of, of, of competition, and as you start improving the skill levels and the quality of the competition rises, then you get greatness. The same thing now becomes with regards to the arts. The arts is an, it's a portal towards entrepreneurship because the arts help people become creative. And it's that creative thinking that makes a big difference. It's being able to think out of the box, being global, so having an iPad and being able to go and search the world starts making the world substantially smaller. But then how do you make that quantum leap? How do you go from parents who themselves don't know how to do the homework, who don't know what the internet is, don't know how to do all the research, who've never left the island of St. Lucia, to all of a sudden take a new generation and have that happen. So nothing happens by itself. And so it does need that interjection, that involvement. He sees five basic rights for every child in St. Lucia. Globally competitive education um, has a right to access to health care, um, has a right to access to an, an economy that gives them the opportunity to do what they want to do, um, has a right uh, to access of, of being able to get on the computer and on the internet and it, for it to be part of the curriculum. Um, I would say to the, the, the access to um, systems and structures 
that help facilitate greatness. With young people, it's opportunity. You know, you have to give that child the opportunity. And even sometimes children who don't do well at school, all of a sudden when they find something that they love, they excel at it. So the fact is, is as a country, we must give them the opportunity to find that thing that they are passionate about and, and then giving them the support to do it. But once economically, it's viable. There's no point in telling young people to become entrepreneurial if nobody has any disposable income in their, in their pockets. He also believes that every family is entitled to a reasonably decent way of life. A proper house with, with running water, with washrooms, um, with privacy, um, has access to affordable food, has access to um, health care, has access to security, um, and has access to opportunity. As Alan Chastney and the United Workers' Party preach their vision from the political platform, he has constantly had to defend his suitability to lead St. Lucians, as his opponents have been personal and relentless in their attacks. It's a much more difficult narrative simply because I look the, like the foreigner. But it, when people get to know me, they start realizing that's not necessarily true. Um, I always say to people, I allow my um, history and I allow my work and my action to speak for itself. I can't defend who I am. I am who I am. I grew up in an era in where parents felt learning, teaching a children Creole was a detriment. And that was my generation, you know. That's my loss. I wish I could speak Creole, but I don't think speaking Creole prohibits me from representing the people of St. Lucia. I don't think speaking Creole prohibits me from being able to deliver the promises and what I have to do for people in St. Lucia. Um, those are the ability of somebody to be able to achieve something. So it's for people to be able to um, step back for a second and measure Alan on not how he looks. I'm asking people, close their eyes. Look at what I have done and I have delivered and why am I here? So if I fit the narrative that was being described of me, why would I be here? We have a cabinet that have produced um, negative economic growth, uh, uh, highest level of unemployment that we've known in the history of our country, um, a judicial system that has completely broken down, a healthcare system that has broken down and an education system that's not delivering greatness to our people and not creating the opportunity we so much need. He also responds to claims that his privileged upbringing has not prepared him to relate to the plight of the poor and by extension adequately tackle poverty. The most important thing in being able to understand poverty is having a conscience. Well, I know that given all the opportunities that I was given how difficult it was still to succeed far less when you're starting down even lower in the ocean. So I grew up with a father who wasn't always rich, but was blessed with common sense um, and bravery. And he, he made a success of himself. And I got to see that develop. And so I started it at a higher level. So for me, I want to give that same gift to everybody in St. Lucia. I want to always see them that the next generation starts at a higher level than they had before. And I truly believe that we've gone backwards in the last 20 years. And I think that we've not improved the opportunity for this generation. Um, and I'm, and I'm, I'm disheartened by it. And I also believe I love St. Lucia. Now for St. Lucia to be the best place to live, the best place to work, the best place to invest, and the best place to visit, it starts with whom? The people. The Chastney-led United Workers' Party has already begun crafting a way forward by reinventing itself and its way of party governance. The United Workers' Party is, is offering a new way forward. We've said to everyone, very difficult to vote once every five years and expect change. Mm -hmm. United Workers' Party has restructured const constituency branches, have empowered the individual members of our party. And not only for, by voting for the party, but by becoming a member of the party, your voice can be heard. Mm -hmm. The policies that we have must be approved and authorized by the party. So for instance, if America comes down tomorrow and says, I must accept same-sex marriages, and we had campaigned against it, I can't just be pressured by America. I must first come back to my party and meet with my people and go through a convention and actually vote for it. So I'm saying to everyone that our party gives you an opportunity to participate in government every day. Democracy is not just a word, it requires involvement. People must practice 
And so United Workers Party is saying that we have taken on the change. We've not asked anybody else to change first. We have changed ourselves. We've brought in a new group of candidates, of people who aren't your typical politicians, people who have actually been and worked in life and have been success stories from all cross walks of life and who are now willing to give something back to their country. And we're asking people to join this revolution, to join this movement, to change, to make St. Lucia the best place to live, the best place to work, the best place to visit, the best place to invest. Acumen and leadership prowess aside, Alan Chastney is at heart a family man, a loving, respectful husband, and doting dad. He's the most romantic person, most romantic guy you'll ever meet. Um, I mean, my friends comment, we have a very close circle of friends, and my friends are always like, God, you're so lucky. And I think the thing is, is I'm not terribly romantic. So he's the one that remembers every anniversary. You know, he's the one that I'll just open my office door and there'll be a huge bouquet of flowers for no reason, just because I love you. Um, I mean, he calls me every day of life, wherever he is in the world, just calling to say I love you. And sometimes I have a client in my office and I really can't reply and I go, okay, well, thanks a lot for calling. I'll call you after my meeting. But he does it every day, wherever he is. I mean, this morning when he left to come to you, bye baby, love you, he won't leave the house without saying that. If he's rushing out somewhere and he hasn't given me a quick kiss, he'll call, like yesterday morning he called, he said, I'm so sorry, I was rushing, I didn't get to kiss you goodbye. I mean, most men don't do that, especially when you've been with your partner for almost a quarter century. He still does that, he still opens doors for me. Um, may not be every day, but a lot of the time he'll still do that. And, you know, he's very much the grand gesture. I could tell you some stories now, but he probably don't have time, but he's incredibly romantic. He's, in, he's incredibly respectful of, of, of me and my opinions. He's incredibly expect, uh, respectful of women in general. Um, always asks my daughter to express herself and to give her opinions and to challenge him on things and to challenge us. So where we have said to the children that we have a hard and fast rule about something, he'll say, unless you can give daddy three compelling reasons, you're not going to get to have this or you're not going to get to do this. And when I met him, I mean, everyone who knows me, I'm, I'm uh, you know, everything for me. I make a lot of fun of things and I have a great sense of humor, I think. And when I first met him, he really wasn't like that. And he used to always say, God, you just giggle at everything. And I said, because you have to. I said, if I can't laugh every day, what's the point of living? And I think that over time, um, we've been a very good balance to each other because he sometimes gets me a little bit more focused and centered on things when I may otherwise get distracted. But I certainly know, I, th I think I pride myself on having brought a great sense of humor, I think, to our relationship and to him. And maybe it was just suppressed for a long time and it's come out now, I don't know. But he has a great sense of humor. As he takes on his greatest challenge to date, Alan Chastney invites the people of St. Lucia to dream big, think that they can, and unite to work to build the new St. Lucia. We can determine our own destiny. And I'm asking people in St. Lucia to join me, stop being a naysayer, and believe that we can be the best. Derek Walcott, Sir Arthur Lewis, Darren Sammy, Laverne Spencer have all now shown us that we can be. How many other West Indians have shown that we can be? What more do we need? What we need to now is make sure that all those people are now going to be the rule and not the exception.